An OnlyFans model says that she ruined her mom's marriage by exposing her stepdad as her top subscriber. <laughs> top, her top. <laughs> yeah. Her stepdad. Well, originally, when you told me the story um, before the show, I, I I didn't hear the word step. From the uh, from the age of eleven, he, uh, she was he, he was her stepdad from the age of eleven. So mm. it says in a video that has now been viewed more than one point seven million times on TikTok, an OnlyFans model from Australia claims she caught her own stepdad spending money on requests for her naughty website and ruined her mother's marriage by exposing them. Well, I think the guy ruined the marriage. Technically, I, I don't know if she ruined the marriage. I think the the dude is the one that ruined the marriage yeah she says i yeah. ruined my mom's marriage i never planned on telling this story on tiktok well i don't buy that i think you were always going to tell this story on tiktok for clout but yeah. here we are she began with her first post so when i first started my website i had this customer who was my number one customer bought every single thing i sent him and he was oh pretty God. much a follower since the beginning <laughs> Um, so she said that they would gross. talk every day and claim that he also made a lot of customer asked for custom requests, spending about two thousand dollars in Australian currency mm. over a two month span of time. She alleged that he had a very specific username on her OnlyFans and only realized someone with the exact same name had been viewing her videos on TikTok and says that she found him because it said like one of your followers is in your role is like in your contacts and she couldn't figure out who it was in her contacts. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. I have a friend that recently started an OnlyFans. Been friends with her for years and years. She started an OnlyFans. She's like, will you promote my OnlyFans? I'm like, man, I can't do it. Does she do good work, though? Uh, I haven't looked. I'm not well, going to look. Got to ask her for a sample. She says, uh, she says, uh, she says, I went absolutely mental trying to figure out who this person was in my contacts. I narrowed it down to six people. One of them was my stepdad. Damn. When. I uh, it says, uh, I went with my gut feeling and messaged the website account and said, I know who this is. And within two minutes, I got a text message from my stepdad saying, hey, can we talk? No. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. This is, um, this is a sign that the culture is like, if, if this isn't a sign that the culture is degrading as far as we think it is. Look, on, a, on any given day, my instinct is always to push back and be like, look, maybe you're in a bubble. Maybe things aren't as bad. You know, everyone has gets a bit of tunnel vision, right? When you read bad news every day, it is possible to black pill yourself. No, that man is disgusting. But I'm saying, like, every time you want to think that the world is not as bad as you think it is, stories like this come out, and you're like, eh, maybe yeah. my first instinct was correct. You, you go to Google and you type in OnlyFans news, and uh, something horrible is popping right up there, some kind of... Some kind of affirmation that, yes, indeed, society yeah. is irredeemable and God was right to smite Sodom and Gomorrah. Damn. <laughs> you, you know one of the biggest copes that I think I hear a lot? A lot of people say um, most people are really affected by the pandemic, but not me. What do you mean? I, I think no one left that unscathed. Yeah. By the pandemic? Like, yeah. Like, you mean mentally? And, and maybe mentally, physically, I don't think anyone left it in in a hundred percent unscathed. Uh, maybe in the context that like it, it kind of showed you how much it could affect people that were close to you that you might have seen thought of as uh, not somebody who would be affected that way, like people who turned their backs on you. The same way that politics kind of went after twenty sixteen, and people who seemed calm and rational suddenly no longer seemed calm and rational. Well, I have I have a a, a few thoughts on that. I think, and one of them is is not just that people didn't escape COVID. It was 2020, so it was the George Floyd riots. Mm. It was COVID. It was election. the election. It was a lot of things that had significant effects on people. Um, and there aren't enough people that were able to actually disconnect from what really is mind altering technology the the like button and and the follow button and stuff like that they really really can control people's minds with that stuff yeah. like you can really get significantly detailed about what kind of impressions this person sees and, and stuff so i don't know that it's just the covid pandemic although the, i do think the covid pandemic had something to do with it i think that it was a lot of things that were going on in 2020 because it was wild, man. A yeah. lot, you know, New York would shut down, nobody on the streets, and, you know, you got to hide from this invisible monster of, of 
COVID and you got to hide from this invisible monster of racism that apparently is yeah. now sticking its head up again. You know, so it's a lot to take. Dude, I lived in D.C. Mm -hmm. And you know how at one point they were like, okay, so you could take masks off before they were like, put them on again. Oh, wait. $20 one right there, Phil. Uh, Clayton Amboy. Hey, Phil, yesterday my brother told me he thinks you're hot. I asked him how much Bud Light he was drinking. What did he say? Well, I mean, first of all, is your brother gay? I, I'm flattered either way, to be honest with you, because that is, that's a compliment. It is a I, don't compliment. Care, I don't care where it comes from. Like, there is no difference between, like, getting a compliment from a dude that is gay or a woman that is straight. Like, either way, they're like, yo, you're attractive, and I'm not going to get mad about that. Don't touch me, but, you know, that goes to woman and man, too. Both of you. Hands to yourself. Hands Every, off. Everyone. Yeah, hands and you yourself. probably should wash them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I got no sweat. I'm not, I got no problem. I got no shade for the guy. Whatever. Cheers, uh, look, as far as this story goes, uh, I see something like st stories like this seem to come up more and more because I think that a lot of these news sites troll for this stuff because they know that it makes shocking content for anyone to talk about, right? But I don't know if it's necessarily uh, one of those things where we're underplaying. Like, I, like I said, I worry that I underplay it. That I'm like, look, maybe life's not as bad as we thought it was. Maybe a lot of times I, I spend all day reading news, right? So you're, anybody's brain can kind of be structurally reprogrammed when all you're doing is reading bad news all day. Remember, everything you read, whether it's positive or negative, has been tailor-made to make you feel a certain way. And there's, that is no exception for people who do stuff like what we do. Every thumbnail, every headline is supposed to make you think, feel, or experience something to get you to click. It goes to what you said. It's desperate for your, people are desperate for your attention because attention equals clicks, clicks equals money, right? Most of the time. Yep. But at the same time, news is a reflection of the world we live in. And it seems like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, these stories would probably still exist, but they would be far less common because of how much easier it is for women and men to make sites like this. And that's weird. Yeah. I don't know. She says, speaking with the Telegraph, after her initial video went viral, she explained that her stepdad was out of the family home within days and nobody was in contact with him after that. He blocked, he is blocked from my pages on all my platforms. I have not heard of him since the day I called him out, she says. He wouldn't even come into the house to collect his belongings while I was there. 11 years old, he was, he was her stepdad at the age of 11. Uh, like, this well, isn't the thing where he moved in after, the, after she was 18 and didn't have much contact with her. He kind of raised way. her. It doesn't like it doesn't matter it's just gross yeah. like it's just there are so many people on only fans homie you did not have to pick the one that is that you are like actually connected with there was an episode of uh, oh what show, it was like um it might have been an episode of criminal minds where like a politician was like seeing his prostitute like daughter but like it was one of those things where it's like oh he we, we've never had sex we just like we just he pays for companionship to talk and like he knew that that was his daughter who he like uh, that was criminal minds was it criminal minds okay and then and like so he knew she didn't know and he was basically just paying her to take care of her because he felt bad for abandoning her when she was kids when she was a kid the world is freaking weird dude yeah. and, and the people writing this stuff are freaking weird it's <laughs> Uh, and, but at the same time, Mary would say, I think Mary would say it's like, like Hollywood is a degeneracy and it's informs the culture in a lot of ways. Yes. Like I think that's would, true. would the culture have fallen this far if this stuff wasn't put into the media, promulgated forward no. and then play, shown to you as something that was, if not normal, something that existed. Communists call it the problem of, uh, of reproduction where a society reproduces the society in their children so your your parents have kids you know they yeah. they teach you how to be an american or how to be whatever and then you have kids and you teach those kids how to be what communists believe is they have to break that 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 reproduction of society because what's happening in western society is people are teaching their kids how to be good you know capitalist liberals yeah. and communists are are intent on severing that and changing the what is being produced it's they want to produce communists they want to produce socialist kids kids that have a a critical consciousness and stuff um marx was marx said you know ruthless criticism of all that is well that's exactly what goes on the the infiltration or, or whatever into the colleges that has really yeah. spread these ideas 
the intent is to create activists so they will agitate for more socialist programs and you can sever the reproduction of a capitalist system and produce a socialist system it worked in china that's what happened with the cultural revolution the kids started they got into the schools the kids started believe being taught communist perspectives and they started churning out communists it's literally like a virus it gets into the schools then it reproduces itself with kids and the kids start going out into into society making more socialist people you know people and, that have a, a, a socialist perspective and in a lot of ways as a society we knew this was coming and everyone kind of for like 20 years there was the cope of like all oh, those kids when they get to the real world exactly when they get to the yeah. real world they're in for a rude awakening yep. well the thing is they're not taking it lying down they're not in for a rude awakening they're trying to force you to awaken to their that's world because people. that's because the the strategy was don't go straight into the corporate world and when you do go into the human resources departments yeah. first Yep. You get into HR and then you get a couple people in, in HR that agree with you. You get a couple people that make some noise that can get a, a lawsuit on the, uh, at the, at the, the company, whether it be some kind of, usually it's some kind of, some middle kind management of, is how you end up ruining these companies. Yeah. You, you get in there in HR and you, you, you have people yep. that, you know, Oh, I was sexually harassed. I was, I, there was racism or whatever. And then once that happens, then you get these companies that have, the, the retraining and stuff, yeah. which is all just Marxist or, you know, Maoist struggle session and stuff, you know, re, re-education is what it is. But you get these retraining programs and you get a whole, you get whole industries yeah. that get, that get propped up or come up around this idea because it's, it, it's cheaper for them to hire this company to teach all their people how to have so good socialist ideas. Yeah. And as opposed to dealing with the two or three the lawsuits. lawsuits that yeah. they're going to get. Yeah. In <laughs> fairness, I think a lot of it falls on the political class. But I think the the countermeasure against those ideas, in my mind, I think historically is our artists. Yeah. And I think art is at an all time low right now in the world where everything is just a derivative of something in the past, everything self-referential and things like that. And so uh, I've, I've said it quite a bit on the show, but I've never expressed it to you, is that I feel that we live in a, in a time where everything is so self-censorious Mm. That that is the current struggle of the time, and naturally, since you're since you're censoring, you can't quite convey through art what that what what it is that thing that you're trying to come across, and so as a substitution of that, we have like lectures. We have this this kind of art that lectures us. It's like, well, if actually, if you were a great person, you would think this yeah. and that and and the other, and it's kind of tell don't show and whereas um, normally you get taught like show don't tell yeah. mm -hmm. i think i think that's that's probably pretty that's, that's my experience too i think that there is probably a a drought of creative <laughs> art because people are afraid to say things that might you know offend someone you can't step out of line you can't say things there are definitely topics that are verboten um, well, back in the day, when you had a when you had art like that, people had to come up to you and express that view to you in person. Your art mm -hmm. offended me in person. Now, all yes. of those critiques come to you uh, at the tip of your fingers, and they come fast. And because the activists, yeah. because there are so many, there there are not a, a gigantic number of activists, but because the activists are so well connected through social media, mm -hmm. they can make it seem like yeah. there is a groundswell of negative reaction towards your whatever most people in the world would see your your comment your idea whatever and say oh and not care it's the people that are activists that can call on other activists to jump on whatever the topic is and go on to you know message boards and go on to uh, Twitter and, and make a stink about it and if they can make a stink they can get a reaction from businesses from people people close their accounts people shut up and what it does is it cools people's it, it cools off the freedom of speech the idea that it's okay to express yourself with you know what in whatever way it may be people that are afraid to speak 
and and talk about things are definitely afraid to you know make art that contains those ideas so i, I think you're right i think in a lot of ways people <clears throat> just are this is a generation unlike any other in which people weren't designed to be heavily criticized constantly mm -hmm. you, you, how many when you think about it in the real world prior to social media how many direct conflicts did you get into in your life on a daily basis in which you where you had a severe high level disagreement with a person mm -hmm. it wasn't that common it might happen at work once in a while you'll argue with your family but in general you're not getting into like high level debates and disagreements every day now that is commonplace and normal and you're kind of always required to defend yourself and every idea all the time and the human mind in my opinion wasn't really meant to do that every day you know i think it may be cultural differences with me because uh, i'm hispanic and so when hispanics uh, i mean I'm sure all, all, all sorts of people do this, but we generally on the holidays, we do huge family gatherings, like 30 something people of like family and extended family. And typically what happens in those family meetings is that you meet a bunch of people. They're very different from you. And when someone is, let's say offensive, mm -hmm. you know, your mother or your aunt will put you aside. He's like, well, uh, uncle blah is like that. Ah, uh, yes. The, that uncle, he's all, yeah, yeah. uncle's always offensive. Yeah, he like he he says he's blah, blah blah, but it's not you know at at no point is it he's offensive so let's get him out of there. Yeah. It's like he's offensive so you learn how to deal with him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I personally am a person that can come off as a bit abrasive because I am a little edgy boy. Yeah, when I'm not on film, and you know I I'm I'm thinking that you know some people do the same thing. You know Dane's a little. Yeah. So but he means well, right? And I feel that we've we've gone from that yeah. to now the to, I feel like the fault is on the person that can't take it. Yeah. Well, it used to be in a way, way that we were expected to be able to handle our own stuff. Right. There, there's levels and there's things that you shouldn't take, but yeah. within reason, yeah. in my opinion, the way I was raised, it's like you should have thicker skin. Like this shouldn't bother you. Anything that's directed at you personally, I think it's reasonable to take offense. If right. someone says something to you, if you hear someone say something and they're talking abstractly to the uh -huh. or talking to other people or you read a tweet, you probably shouldn't take offense. Maybe you'll be like, ooh, maybe you'll, you'll chime in and be like, I don't like this or I disagree. But taking offense on behalf of other people is, um, is really about you wanting to try to assert yourself and, and tell these people that they are wrong and immoral for having, having had the discussion that you find wrong and immoral. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.